Last night, the new Republican frontrunner was here in Arkansas. Yes, yes, Donald Trump, finally a candidate whose hair gets more attention than mine. But there's nothing funny about the hate he is spewing at immigrants and their families, and now the insults he's directed at a genuine war hero, Senator John McCain. Donald Trump has done it again, said something outrageous and made the weekend political all about him. But despite those who wish he would just mouth off and go away, Trump is still grabbing headlines and supporters, leaving many inside the beltway to wonder what, if anything, it will take to shut him down and shut him up if they can. Welcome to The Political Animal. Newsmax Chief Washington Correspondent, member of the White House Press Corps, John Gizzi, joined by the former Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York, now Senior Fellow at the London Center for Policy Research, Betsy McCoy. Good to see you both again. And Betsy, I'm going to begin with you because a new poll out by Monmouth University shows Iowa Republican voters, and this is all after the weekend, Scott Walker, 22%. Donald Trump still has 13 percent. What does it tell you then about the voters in America who are still backing him after this statement? Well, that's right. Americans like straight talkers, contrary to what the sanctimonious uh, Mrs. Clinton has to say. And the fact is, even though Donald Trump was a bit off the reservation in criticizing John McCain's war record, McCain was a terrible presidential candidate totally ineffective against Barack Obama. And Trump, on the other hand, is willing to go mano a mano against any of these candidates. Now, I said mano a mano because I'm predicting that maybe he can simply buy out Mrs. Clinton rather than run against her. She's generally for sale. All right. Now, let me come to you, John, because inside the Beltway, look, you talk to these people on a day-to-day -day basis. They're all feeling the repercussions. They all listen and watch what's going on. What's the general consensus of people in and around Washington regarding Donald Trump? Is he just a, a flash in the pan, or are they really worried that he could be the president? I have yet to meet anyone in the punditocracy or certainly any of my colleagues in the White House press corps who believe he will emerge as the Republican nominee. Uh, look, leaving aside his earlier remarks, he did go too far with John McCain. And going back to the year 2000, when Betsy was lieutenant governor and I covered the presidential race, so many people who were Republican activists said they had disagreements with McCain but they nonetheless supported him because, and I quote, we owe him for Vietnam, unquote. Uh, POW and John McCain are mutually inclusive. And when you say something about his war record, his calling card, his signature, you cross the line. This is going to hurt Trump with a number of activists, the polls notwithstanding. I see him as a candidate in another presidential election year, Ross Perot in 1992 who began to say some things people thought went too far and were outrageous got out of the race for a while and got back in uh, a far weakened figure than he was when he started out so betsy let me get this to I you because and by the way i have to tell i got to tell john thing. first of all i love the word punditocracy i'm going to go ahead and write that one down that one's going to live forever here uh, betsy i, I, I know you want to answer out. on this but let's be honest here betsy he did say he's not a war hero he said that that slams an awful sure. lot of people he's including myself matter. who is a son of a veteran that's right he's wrong on that but this is not a mistake from which he can cannot recover. For example, let me point out that Richard Blumenthal, the senator from Connecticut, actually lied about his war record and said he served in Vietnam when he didn't, and yet he's sitting in the United States Senate. So people forgive these mistakes, and I think that the voters will forgive Trump's mistake. Let's see how he does in the future. But however it works out for Donald Trump, the fact is he has been a very positive contribution to this presidential race because he's forcing the other candidates to be honest talkers. Well, he's certainly well, forcing people to at least address certain issues. I'll give you that much. John, I got about 30 seconds left here. Something else. Jeb Bush vowed on Monday to shake up Washington culture if he reaches the White House. 30 seconds, John. Shake up Washington culture. Don't we hear this from everybody? That's impossible. <laughs> Uh, I've heard different versions of it over the years. I think people sometimes forget 
that he was a very successful governor in Florida in everything from taxes to education reform and was considered quite conservative. Uh, Congressman Bill Posey of Florida said he was the best governor Florida ever had, bar none. Uh, on the other hand, Mr. Posey, who worked closely with him, has yet to decide which candidate he uh -huh. backs. There's uh -huh. some doubt whether he can bring this Florida common sense to Washington years later. Good luck on that one. John Gizzi, Betsy McCoy, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us both. We'll talk again. Let me remind everybody, Donald Trump, top of the GOP polls, the media and his critics say he doesn't have a plan. He does. He wrote a whole book that he says will make America great. The bestseller is called Time to Get Tough. Newsmax has free offers for this book. Just go to Newsmax.com slash Trump book and get your copy. The Hardline continues.